What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons. Today I'm going to show you how to do a reflection in Photoshop. Now as you can see I have a picture of the Jefferson Memorial and it already has some sort of a reflection to it but the reflection that I'm going to do is going to be of the building itself and I'm going to show you how to do that in Photoshop. So let's get started. So I already have the Jefferson Memorial in my Photoshop document and it's the only layer here. So to get started I'm going to first take this lock off of this layer so that way we're free to kind of move it around if we want. Now we're going to make a new layer and then we're going to go to our gradient tool and it's going to be over here and it might have the paint bucket tool on it or 3D material drop tool on it but we're going to be using the gradient tool so I'm going to click that and then all these options at the top will pop up so I'm going to click this little thumbnail here and then this window will pop up. This window is what you can use to create a custom gradient, which is what we're about to do. Now prior to making this video, I already have the gradient that we're gonna use already created. So that would be this, this white to transparent gradient, but I'm gonna show you how to create it. So down here at this little toolbar or whatever, we're gonna mess with these little icons that are on the toolbar. Those are called stops. The stops that are here at the bottom, they indicate the colors within the gradient. The ones at the top indicate the transparency or opacity of each color. So since we want there to be a white to a transparent gradient, we're going to change both these stops to a white. So I'm going to click on one stop and then there's an option for my color. So we're going to click that and we're going to move this to a white and hit OK. And we're going to do the same thing with this other one too. Make sure that's a white and hit OK. Okay, and now both stops are white. Now we got to change the transparency of just one of them so that way it's a transparent gradient. So let's do this one. You can do that with either stop. It just has to be done to one of them. So we're going to click this one. And then over here is the option for opacity. Right now the opacity is at 100, but we want it to be at a transparent gradient. So we want it to be at zero. So we're going to quickly change that to zero. And now it's at 0%. And as you can see, this little toolbar shows us the opaque white to a transparent. So I already have it saved here, but to save it, all you gotta do is give it a name, and I'm gonna name it Transparent Gradient, and hit New. And then it'll pop up somewhere on the screen or save it in one of these folders, however you're gonna organize it. But to make it simple, I'm just gonna keep it right here, and then hit OK. And now my cursor will look like this. And now Photoshop will give you the option to create your gradient somewhere inside of your canvas. So we're gonna start this gradient right over here where the water is. And we're gonna drag that down. And as you can see, I'm free to move this line to and from, but I wanna make that straight coming down. So to make it straight, all you gotta do is hold the shift key and just drag it all the way to the bottom. And then lift up on your cursor and then the gradient will look somewhat like this. But after you create your gradient, it'll work like an image in Photoshop, so you can move it to and from or however you're gonna do it. So let's go back to our regular move tool. And holding the shift key again, we're gonna freely move this gradient down. Now we want the blend area to be in the entire area of the water. The blend area is pretty much down here. So what we can do is we're going to hit the enter or return button or hit this check mark up here to confirm the placement of this gradient. Okay, and then we're going to make this layer invisible for now. And now let's go back to our original layer and select the area we want there to be a blend area in. So let's go to our rectangle tool. And I'm going to select that entire area of the water. Okay. And now let's make this layer visible again. And now we're going to go back to select and hit inverse. So that way it selects everything else but the water. And now selecting the gradient layer, we're going to hit the backspace or delete button to get rid of all the extra white that we don't need. So delete. And there we go. Now we have that gradient inside of the water. So now we're gonna hit Command D to deselect. And we're good to go. Now what we're gonna do is take our original layer and we're gonna duplicate that. So we're gonna hit that, right click and hit duplicate. And then hit okay. And then we're gonna move that layer up above our gradient. 
And now holding the Alt key or the Option key, we're gonna move our cursor just below this layer and then this icon will pop up. And when that icon pops up, we're gonna be creating a clipping mask layer so that way this entire image will be just inside the gradient. So we're gonna click and then the layer should look something like this. And you probably won't see a direct difference right yet, but what we are gonna do is take our top image layer and we're gonna rotate that 180 degrees. And we're gonna hold the shift key while we do that. And then we're just gonna be repositioning just this layer. So let's hit the check mark right quick. I'm just gonna lock this layer and the gradient layer so that way I don't accidentally reposition or shift the wrong layer. So let's go back to this one. And using the down button, we can slowly shift it. Down like this. And I think when you hit the down button, it just goes pixel by pixel. So that's why it's going a little slow. But you can see that we're seeing a difference. So we're getting a little closer, closer, and stop. And then we're gonna click off that layer. And as you can see, there is kind of a gradient going on into the water. But you will notice that in the original picture, there's people right over here, but the people in our reflection is over here. So that means we gotta flip it either horizontal or vertical. So let's right click on our image and hit flip horizontal and that way the people are evenly reflected where they should be okay and now hit the check mark or the enter key to confirm the position and there we go but we're not done yet so we're gonna unlock our gradient layer and now we're gonna select both our gradient layer and our top image layer right click and hit we got to go all the way down to hit merge layers and now both layers are merged together. But now we want our layer to kind of merge with the color of the water. So one way you can do that is by reducing the opacity of it. To do that, we can click this layer and there's like a little drop box up here that says opacity and right now it's at 100 so that way our image or layer is completely opaque. No light is passing through it. So to reduce the opacity of it, we can just hit this drop box and then this little toolbar comes up. So you can change that from 100 to zero or anywhere in between. Like that. So as you can see, it kind of merges with the color of the water and you kind of see the waves in the water as well. So I'm about to show you another way to do it. So let me bring that back to 100. So there's another Dropbox up here that says normal. And here are all the different blending options. For this one, it's already at normal, so it would pretty much work the way a normal layer would work. So a good thing that Photoshop does is when you hover over each of these different blending options, it shows you automatically before you click on each of these different options. So here's darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn. I'm not gonna sit here and explain each and every blending option there is, but you can just play around with some of these settings to see which one you like or which one you think would work for this picture. I think soft light would work for me because you see the colors of the Jefferson Memorial already. And if I hit soft light, it kind of merges with the color of the water. And at the same time, we see the waves too. So I'm gonna use soft light and that looks pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is keep that layer selected. I'm gonna go all the way up to the top where it says filter. Then I'm gonna go to blur. And then instead of going to Gaussian blur like I usually do, I'm gonna go to motion blur. Because the water itself has some sort of a motion to it. And I don't want it to be like blurred so that way the contents of the image just go everywhere. I want there to be some sort of motion blur so that way it kind of goes side to side. Because that's what the water is looking like. But now that motion blur pops up, I can move this little toolbar to and from to see how much of a blur I want there to be in our reflection. And just like I said, the blurring action is happening side to side, which is what I want to go for. And I think that's looking pretty good. And once you're done with that, you can hit OK. And then if you want to make the final adjustments, like make this a little bit more opaque, like we just did, let's go to our Dropbox that says Opacity and just blend that. 
and there we go we got ourselves a good looking reflection so that's how you do it in Photoshop so if you liked the video or if you found it useful give it a like and a comment subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload and I'll see you in my next video I